Welcome to Stories with Liz and another Charles Dickens ghost story. It is actually called Four Ghost Stories, but I'll not go all overboard with Dickens here and limit myself to doing just the first. The first story. Some few years ago, a well-known English artist received a commission from Lady F to paint a portrait of her husband. It was settled that he should execute the commission at F Hall in the country because his engagements were too many to permit his entering upon a fresh work till the London season should be over. As he happened to be on terms with intimate acquaintance with his employers, the arrangements were satisfactory to all concerned and on the 13th of September, he set out in good heart to perform his engagements. He took the train for the station nearest to F Hall and found himself, when first starting, alone in a carriage. His solitude did not, however, continue long. At the first station out of London, a young lady entered the carriage and took the corner opposite of him. She was very delicate looking, with a remarkable blending of sweetness and sadness in her countenance, which did not fail to attract the notice of a man of observation and sensibility. For some time neither uttered a syllable. But at length the gentleman made the remarks usual under such circumstances, on the weather and the country, and the ice being broken, they entered into conversation. They spoke of painting. The artist was much surprised by the intimate knowledge the young lady seemed to have of himself and his doings. He was quite certain that he had never seen her before. His surprise was by no means lessened when she suddenly inquired whether he could make, from recollection, the likeness of a person whom he had only seen once, or at most twice. He was hesitating what to reply when she added, do you think, for example, that you could paint me from recollection? He replied that he was not quite sure, but perhaps he could. Well, she said, look at me again. You may have to take a likeness of me. He complied with this odd request, and she asked rather eagerly, Now, do you think you could? I, I think so, he replied, but I cannot say for certain. At this moment the train stopped, the young lady rose from her seat, smiled in a friendly manner at the painter and bade him goodbye, adding as she quitted the carriage, We shall meet again soon. The train rattled off and Mr. H., the artist, was left alone to his reflections. The station was reached in due time, and Lady F's carriage was there to meet the expected guest. It carried him to the place of his destination, one of the stately homes of England, after a pleasant drive, and deposited him in the hall door, where his host and hostesses was standing to receive him. A kind greeting passed, and he was shown to his room, for the dinner hour was close at hand. Having completed his toilet and descended to the drawing room, Mr. H. was much surprised and much pleased to see seated on one of the ottomans his young companion of the railway carriage. She greeted him with a smile and a bow of recognition. She sat by his side at dinner, spoke to him two or three times, mixed in the general conversation and seemed perfectly at home. Mr. H. had no doubt of her being an intimate friend of his hostess. The evening passed away pleasantly. The conversation turned a good deal upon the fine arts in general and on paintings in particular, and Mr. H. was entreated to show some of the sketches he had brought down with him from London. He readily produced them, and the young lady was much interested in them. At a late hour, the party broke up, and its members retired to their several apartments. Next morning, early, Mr. H. was tempted by the bright sunlight to leave his room and stroll out into the park. The drawing room opened into the garden. Passing through it, he inquired of a servant who was busy arranging the furniture whether the young lady had come down yet. 
"'What young lady, sir?' asked the man with an appearance of surprise. "'The young lady who dined here last night.' "'No young lady dined here last night, sir,' he replied, looking fixedly at him. The painter said no more, thinking within himself that the servant was either very stupid or had a very bad memory. So leaving the room, he sauntered out into the park. He was returning to the house when his host met him, and the usual morning salutations passed between them. "'Your fair friend has left you?' observed the artist. "'What young friend?' inquired the lord of the manor. "'The young lady who dined here last night,' returned Mr. H. "'I cannot imagine to whom you refer,' replied the gentleman, very greatly surprised. "'Did not a young lady dine and spend the evening here yesterday?' "'No,' replied his host. "'Most certainly not. "'There was no one at the table but yourself, my lady and I.' "'The subject was never reverted to after this occasion, "'yet our artist could not bring himself to believe "'that he was laboring under a delusion. "'If the whole were a dream, it was a dream in two parts. "'As surely as the young lady has been his companion in the railway carriage, "'so surely she had sat beside him at the dinner table.' Yet she did not come again, and everybody in the house except himself appeared to be ignorant of her existence. He finished the portrait on which he was engaged and returned to London. For two whole years he followed up his profession, growing in reputation and working hard, yet he never all the while forgot a single lineament in the fair young face of his fellow traveller, he had no clue by which to discover where she had come from or who she was. He often thought of her, but he spoke to no one about her. There was a mystery about the matter which imposed silence on him. It was wild, strange, utterly unaccountable. Mr. H. was called to business to Canterbury. An old friend of his, whom I will call Mr. Wild, resided there. Mr. H., being anxious to see him and having only a few hours at his disposal, wrote as soon as he reached the hotel, begging Mr. Hyde to call upon him there. At the time appointed, the door of the room opened, and Mr. Wilde was announced. He was a complete stranger to the artist, and the meeting between the two was a bit awkward at first. It appeared on explanation that Mr. H.'s friend had left Canterbury some time before, and that the gentleman now face to face with the artist was an other Mr. Wilde, that the note intended for the absentee had been given to him, and that he had obeyed the summons, supposing some business matter to be the cause of it. The first coldness and surprise dispelled, the two gentlemen entered into more friendly conversation, for Mr. H. had mentioned his name, and it was not a strange one to his visitor. When they had conversed a little while, Mr. Wilde asked Mr. H. whether he had ever painted, or could undertake to paint, a portrait from mere description. Mr. H. replied, never. I ask you the strange question, said Mr. Wilde, because about two years ago I lost a dear daughter. She was my only child, and I loved her dearly. Her loss was of heavy affliction to me, and my regrets are the deeper that I have no likeness of her. You are a man of unusual genius. If you could paint me a portrait of my child, I should be very grateful. Mr. Wilde then described the features and appearance of his daughter, and the color of her eyes and hair, and tried to give an idea of the expression of her face. Mr. H. listened attentively, and feeling great sympathy with his grief, made a sketch. He had no thoughts of it being like, but hoped that the bereaved father might possibly think so. But the father shook his head on seeing the sketch and said, No, it's not at all like. Again the artist tried, and again he failed. The features were pretty well, but the expression was not hers, and the father turned away from it, 
thanking Mr. H. for his kind endeavors, but quite hopeless of any successful result. Suddenly, a thought struck the painter. He took another sheet of paper, made a rapid and vigorous sketch, and handed it to his companion. Instantly, a bright look of recognition and pleasure lighted up the father's face, and he exclaimed, "'That is she! Surely you must have seen my child, or you never could have made such a perfect likeness!' "'When did your daughter die?' inquired the painter with agitation. Two years ago, on the 13th of September, she died in the afternoon after a few days' illness. Mr. H. pondered, but said nothing. The image of that fair young face was graven upon his memory with a diamond point, and her strangely prophetic words were now fulfilled. A few weeks after, having completed a beautiful full-length portrait of the young lady, he sent it to her father, and the likeness was declared by anyone who had ever seen her to be perfect. Hmm, the end. What a beautiful story. I'm feeling a little moved here. Mm, I hope it moved you too. If you did enjoy it, do feel free to help me out by giving it a like. Hope you'll have a great week. Hope to see you next time. Bye.